Um, I would love to welcome Mrs. Donetta Bishop Johnson. Hello, um, everyone. I am so just privileged to have you here. Um, I had an opportunity to work for uh, Donetta last summer as the music director in the virtual summer camp. And um, I, it is the Allegra School of Music and Arts that she runs and has founded. And if you'd be willing to tell us about yourself, that would be fantastic. All right, well, um, my name is Donetta Bishop Johnson. I'm the owner and founder of Allegra, the School of Music and Performing Arts. Um, I started the school in 1999. Um, uh, there was no real music school in my community. And my mother had always taught me that, you know, you have to create the world that you want to live in. So instead of like complaining, there's no music school, there's no arts, um, I just decided to go out and, and make one, um, which was a little bit crazy. I You're going to make you cry. <laughs> <laughs> oh it was a little bit strange because I'm not a musician. Um, I, I was a person who studied math and computer science. And so I was a computer scientist. I programmed, you know, big systems. Um, and that was a lot of fun for me. But when I was growing up in Brooklyn, um, there was arts everywhere. Like when you come out of the subway, there was someone playing. There were, you know, kids break dancing on the street. Um, as a kid, I got to, because I lived in New York City, I got to go to Carnegie Hall and Lincoln Center um, and Broadway shows all the time. Um, not because I was rich or anything, but, you know, New York City provides its school children access to, to the arts. And so it's just something you, you do all the time. You don't even think about it. You don't even understand how special that is. And so when I moved out to New Jersey, um, I thought it was really beautiful out here, but I didn't have the arts in that same way. So I missed it a lot. And so I started trying to figure out like, you know, how do I get the arts and, you know, for my kids in particular. So I started like driving to different places for art classes. And then after a while I thought, well, this is kind of silly. You know, why don't, why don't I try to make one for myself? Um, and that's, that's how we got started. And you were mentioning that you were playing viola, was it elementary school? And one day you had... Yeah, so I was um, going to New York City schools in the 1970s and um, we had a major budget cut um, and it's kind of famous. So like one day I was playing, I was in music class and I was playing my viola and I loved, I loved everything about the viola. I loved practicing on it. And then they cut the music program. They just cut it. And then the next day, it felt like to me, like no more viola, no more, no more music class. And that was it. That was really it for me. So um, you're really very lucky, um, although you shouldn't be, it should be something that every school child has the opportunity to learn the music, music firsthand with an instrument in school. So yeah, that was, that was taken away. Wow. Um, would you, what are some triumphs and challenges you've had running the, the Allegra school? Wow. Um, a lot. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, so I, I talk about creating a music school. I didn't really know too much about music except for my kids that take music classes. And so um, to really figure out how to hire the right people um, you know, trust the right people because I didn't have the musical expertise. So I needed to make sure that I hired the right people with the right music expertise. Um, and so that was a lot of fun, but it was also challenging. And, you know, every now and again, I'd make a, an inappropriate hire and I have to, you know, like fix it. Um, so that was, that was challenging. Also, um, what I found out was my neighborhood, they didn't have a music school before, so I had to really teach them about the importance of the arts. And so it's not like I opened the music school and people just came. <laughs> <You know? laughs> I had to like be very, very patient and go out and find those people yeah. and, and, you know, sort of help them understand why music education was so much, it was, was so important. 
um, as a person, you know, developing and, and to have music and theater. And, the, and at that time we had art classes as well, um, how important it was to have those things in your, in your life. Um, so yeah, in the beginning, uh, we'd had, we had to do summer camps where there were sometimes only five kids and two of those kids were mine. <laughs> sure. So yeah, so we, we just had to keep pushing, you know, just keep trying. Um, and the more we kept trying, the more people understood, wow, they're really doing something very special over there and they really care. And so every semester more and more kids came in and we took so seriously what we were doing and we wanted to, it to be really done well. So we, we really created very nice theater shows and the more people saw, wow, they really care about the, what they're doing. Yeah. We had a better reputation and then more people would come. And then fast forward, now it's like 21 years, um, you know, the school is kind of, has a really great reputation with the local families, as well as the theater directors, um, you know, all over, all over the central Jersey. And so people come not only from the neighborhood, but from different places as well. It's a lot of fun. I have to say it's, it's been a lot of fun. It's very, very challenging, but it's been a lot of fun as well. And for me, your passion and love for it comes through and your care, because, um, you know, I've been many places and it's just so, for me, exciting and inspiring. I'm, I'm a fan girl. <laughs> I appreciate that. Thank just, you, Ms. Marion. <laughs> <laughs> so what is your favorite kind of music? Oh, man, that is so tough. Um, the, the world of music is so wide and, and so I never want to limit myself because I'm always discovering like great things. So, you know, I mean, I grew up with jazz and, and soul and pop music. Um, and then when I got a little bit older, I, dis I discovered um, uh, uh, more jazz because at the first jazz seems like, you know, sort of like a grown up music. And so I started to understand jazz more. Then I just started to be exposed to reggae music. That was a lot of fun. Um, classical music, you know, I had been exposed to as a child, just listening to Mr. Rogers neighborhood and, and taking all those trips to, to Lincoln Center and Carnegie Hall. So that was always in my brain someplace, but then I started to really appreciate it and listen to it on my own. Um, and now sort of my favorite music is um, Broadway. I, I really love Broadway music, but I, I must say that I don't like to listen to one thing all the time. I like to like sort of mix it up. Yep. Um, and I'm, right now I'm listening to a lot of Senegalese musicians. Um, yeah, um, I, I really appreciate uh, South Asian music. So it's like, I like to listen to uh, Latin music is gorgeous. Uh, so just, there's so much music. There's really no reason to limit yourself. Yeah. They, mm -hmm. I, I appreciate in our, our middle school in our district, they call music life skills. And I think that that's a perfect, description because you know my brother who's a lawyer he sings in a choir and he canters and you know it makes him happy yeah exactly there you go um you have fa any favorite broadway shows oh my gosh so um not high school yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> um my favorite broadway musical right now is once on this island um, I love that a lot. I love the Afro-Caribbean music. I love the, the story. Uh, I, I saw it on Broadway like four times. Um, oh my gosh. It was done theater in the round. I, I really, really loved it. It was just an excellent production. Um, I love Stephen Sondheim. So I love Into the Woods. Uh, and you know, you gotta love Les Mis. Yes, right? so, uh, I love that. And I haven't seen this live, but I absolutely am blown away by Hamilton. Yeah. yeah. Incredible. I was yeah. so amazed. Um, Have you seen it? I did for my 50th birthday and um, just, yeah, it was incredible. I was riveted. I had no idea. I didn't expect to, I didn't, you know, my, I knew it was great, but I thought mm, maybe people are over exaggerating. No. <laughs> they were not. <laughs> um, has COVID changed how your school is run? 
a lot, a lot. So one day we were in the studio with um, probably eight or nine teachers coming into studio every day. And then uh, the governor's edict came down and we, we immediately transitioned to online classes. Luckily, um, we had knew this was, we figured out that this was coming. My son um, has an obsession with um, pandemics and had been studying pandemics around the world oh, since, wow. he was like eight, since he was like eight years old. It was just something he was very interested in and had been like just studying like all kinds of like pandemics and epidemics for a really long time. So weeks and weeks before he was like, this is coming, this is, this is happening um, because it was already happening in, in Asia um and Italy and different places in Europe and it's like it's absolutely coming here so we need to start figuring out how we are going to transition to virtual classes so we had done some research and we'd even bought some equipment like um you know microphones and and uh, detachable cameras lighting um and so by the time it came we we have trained our teachers and we're ready to 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 just move forward and I have to say, um, you know, pandemic is a terrible, terrible thing. But from our perspective, having to figure out very quickly how to do it was kind of fun yeah. um, because I, I sort of like the challenge of having to figure things out quickly um, and, and move forward with it. So it's, it's changed our business a lot. But what hasn't changed is our teachers really enjoy teaching their yeah. students, they really enjoy being with their students and they they love teaching the arts. And so that's still the same. And I'm really happy that the students have really been willing to continue to learn and that the teachers are so happy to continue to give them, you know, a really fantastic class. And so it's working out really nicely. It was it was kind of amazing with the summer theater program. It, it you know, there was just so much that we were able to get out of it. And I think the, even the kids were like, oh, wow, I didn't expect it to, you know, uh, it's not optimal, I guess, but you still, the creativity is there. Yeah. I mean, this is, this is not what we want, but we are trying to survive during the pandemic. So the pandemic is a very serious thing and it's very serious health con consequences, but we wanted to make sure that, you know, during su such tough times that we're continuing to, to grow artistically and it's fun, right? It, yeah. the music is fun. And so we want to keep that in our lives. We don't want the pandemic to take away everything. Um, um, I guess in closing, do you have any special advice for aspiring performers? The, the most important thing that I could tell you is, you know, hang in there. It's, it's really important to be patient with yourself. Um, they say music education, the arts introduce us to ourselves, right? Um, when we're practicing, it, it's so it, cool. <laughs> right? When we're practicing, those are, it's difficult. You, when you're practicing, you're yeah. seeing exactly what you have trouble with and what you need to work harder on. And that's hard because, you know, as humans, sometimes we think that we want everything to come easily to us, to, to us right? Yeah. But some things don't come easily and that's okay. Just keep working at it. And if you keep showing up, for your music, for your arts, um, for your drama, uh, and and being patient and just getting better and better and better, you will find that you will get better and that you will be happy that you stuck in there. So that's what I would encourage you people, don't quit. Um, if you find that something is really not your cup of tea, you know, change it, go off into another d direction. You know, if you're studying tuba and you love music, but maybe tuba isn't your instrument, then maybe try piano or maybe try violin, but stay with music because you will find something that you really appreciate. And then you work hard, 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 hard. And then it, it sounds easy and people say, oh, it's so easy. <laughs> exactly, oh. right. Exactly. So if you want it to be easy, work hard to get there because then it becomes easier once you understand what you're doing, right? Yeah. Ah, thank you so much. You're so inspiring. Oh, my pleasure. My pleasure. All right. Well, <sighs> thank you.